Tonight, an exclusive interview addressing what some are calling perhaps the biggest oil spill in U.S. history. Yeah, New Orleans-based Taylor Energy Company had an oil platform that toppled in a hurricane 15 years ago. Well, it's been leaking oil into the Gulf of Mexico ever since. The company has said very little about the leak over the years, but now the CEO is responding to new claims that the spill is actually 1,000 times larger. David Hammer joins us now with the details on this investigative report. So how can they be so far apart? Well, it's a very good question, Katie, because Taylor and the government are as far apart on this as they can be. Taylor CEO Will Piku tells me the science in this new government report is fundamentally flawed. That's why he invited us out on a seaplane to see the spill up close so you can decide how bad it is for yourself in our latest oil and water investigation. That's another well board that you put in place. Will Piku is the CEO of Taylor Energy. Miles down His New Orleans-based company hasn't produced oil and gas since 2008. It exists for one reason and one reason only, to deal with a 15-year-old oil leak in the Gulf of Mexico. There's nine total colored wires. Those represent the nine intervention wells that we perform. Piku is showing us a model of the tangled web of wells that lie under the seabed. They were feeding oil and gas to a Taylor Energy platform when it collapsed in a mudslide during Hurricane Ivan in 2004. Piku says the company spent $480 million trying to stop the leak and succeeded in plugging the wells where oil could still leak out. There is no indication that we have to support a leaking well. The oil may not be coming from the wells anymore but it is still leaking to the surface every day. Scientists believe it's oozing out from under the mudslide that toppled the platform, and national news reports have suggested Taylor is trying to skirt its responsibilities by hiding the true size of its spill. The media says this was hidden. That was a false statement. It has been out there, and we've been reporting the Sheen sightings from our overflights going back to 2008. But it's not just the media. Environmental watchdog Jonathan Henderson, who flies out to the site often, says Taylor's lowballing the size of its leak. Taylor is claiming that it's coming from the wreckage. It doesn't appear to be that way at all. Um, because if it were coming from the wreckage, then it would come up over here, it would come up over there. But it's coming up in one, one pinpoint location and then spreads out. And now the Coast Guard is breaking ranks with Taylor too. For 15 years, Taylor Energy and the federal government agencies worked side by side, applying the best science and world-renowned experts to truly identify and characterize what's going on at our site. Uh, that changed in September. That's when scientist Oscar Garcia filed this expert report for the government in a lawsuit against Taylor Energy. He also used satellite image analysis to peg the rate of oil at anywhere from 249 to 697 barrels a day. That's 10,000 to 30,000 gallons a day. And that report was fundamentally flawed. I, I can't say it any more different than that. It grossly exaggerated the release rate that is going on at the site. I spoke to Garcia by phone, but he referred questions about his report to the U.S. Justice Department, which declined to comment because of the pending litigation against Taylor. 10 to 30,000 gallons a day is much less than the BP oil spill in 2010. That gusher spewed 1.5 million gallons a day into the Gulf. But Garcia's high-end estimate of the Taylor leak, stretched over 15 years, would rival the totals from the worst oil spill in U.S. history. I can check them in Venice in a minute. Taylor Energy invited us out on this seaplane so that we could fly about 12 miles off the tip of Louisiana and see what it's like for ourselves at the site of their oil leak. Other than the we were joined by Gil Birkins, a contractor hired by Taylor Energy to fly over the leak twice a week, look at the color of the sheen, and calculate how much oil is on the surface. First thing to see is there's no dark oil in it. I don't see anything but uh a little bit of metallic. Really didn't even see any rainbow. There's only a lit, only maybe a little bit of rainbow if you look at the where the sun hits right there. Right. Maybe some yellows in there. The color of the sheen is important because it relates to the thickness of the oil. The darker the sheen, the thicker the oil. Birkins puts what we observed into a government authorized spill calculator on his tablet. With 10.2 gallons. Okay, total, total. Taylor hired skimmer boats from the cleanup contractor Clean Gulf Associates to collect any thick oil, and when we went out there, they didn't find any. It has to be dark oil. 
Okay. The, with the sheen that we saw out there, there's absolutely nothing you can do with that. There's no way to pick that up. So those guys from Queen Gulf Associates are not going to have anything to do out there with those boats. That's correct. In fact, Taylor says Queen Gulf Associates has only collected 10 gallons of recoverable oil over the entire 15 years. Okay, so y'all are arguing about how much it is. Why can't we just get to a place where we can do something about it? We've been trying to do something about it for 15 years. But it's only in the last few months that the Coast Guard got decidedly more aggressive. It federalized spill containment efforts in October and hired a new cleanup contractor in November, all at Taylor's expense and against Taylor's wishes. Piku says the Coast Guard is being led astray by Garcia's report and the resulting national media attention. That flawed piece of work gave criticism to the Coast Guard for not acting. I think Coast Guard in a knee-jerk reaction said we need to do something, do something now. Piku worries the new Coast Guard plan to put a containment device near the seafloor could disturb the sediments trapping the oil, causing more harm than good. You're going to stir it up, you're going to release that oil into the water column, and you will create a more adverse component to the water column, to the environment. But Coast Guard officials say they're confident the new plans are environmentally safe and are not a knee-jerk reaction. They say they used more than the new Garcia report, but a series of scientific surveys dating back to 2012 to come to the conclusion that the leak could be a thousand times worse than they thought. Now, the Coast Guard says it plans to deploy that new containment dome on the seafloor to collect oil, and they said they're going to do that soon. And just this week, President Donald Trump appointed David Bernhardt to become the new Interior Secretary. Bernhardt was on Taylor Energy's legal team when it sued the Interior Department in 2016 over the money to plug these wells. That lawsuit is ongoing in Washington, but Piku says Bernhardt was never involved in that case. This is just shocking. I mean, how do you go 15 years without even knowing where the oil's coming from? Right. They don't know if it's coming from the sediment, if it's coming from a single point, and they seem to be making some progress now, but they don't agree on how to do it. All right, David, thank you.